So you want to start flipping used computer components. It's not as hard as you think, but there's a few tips that you might find helpful if you're starting something like this. I've been doing it for about a month, a month and a couple days to be exact, and I think I have some helpful advice that might help you. So stick around and we'll go over that. So you might be asking why someone who's only been doing it for a month should be giving you advice on how to do this. You know, I haven't been in the industry for years and years. I don't know that secret sauce on how to get all those good deals and you know, it's not that kind of video. I wanna go into this video explaining to people who want to get into it, what it's like for the first month fresh. Like, you know, I just got done with my first month. It's not someone who's been doing it forever, reflecting, you know, five, 10 years past about how they started back then. It's how you should start right now, what you can expect, what like tips and tricks, not tricks, more just like general guidelines that might help you start doing your own little flipping business. With all that said, let's kick into the video. So I'm gonna cut through a pile of crap right off the bat. I put in a hundred bucks at the beginning of the month. That's where I started. I bought, you know, three uh, RX 570s for a hundred dollars. And at the end of the month, I've made $20 profit, which sounds absolutely horrible. And I realize that, but you have to take into account that's just profit that I have currently. That's not including the inventory that I have right now. All the money I've made off flipping has paid for all this and $20. Roughly right now, my inventory is like $1,200. And so taking everything into account, I've turned $100 at the beginning of the month into roughly $1,200, which is about a $1,000 profit if you looked at just purely selling things back and forth. I like to look at it this way because it shows that I have all this inventory to keep making money off of and keep pushing. All this could burn in the ground and I could walk away and be like, I didn't spend a dime flipping computers. And that's including, you know, gas to get everywhere, shipping costs for things on eBay and whatnot. Like, so for the first month, basically you're just aiming to pay for it if you wanna keep going further. If you're planning on actually doing this month after month, you should look at having your first month paid for by the end of that month and have projects and the work that you can keep going off of. If you're just doing it for like, you know, a $50 to $1,000 flip for like a YouTube video or something, then you have a different mentality. You're looking for a lot quicker, smaller deals. With me, I'm looking for long-term quote unquote investment. We're not talking like stock trades, you know, years long-term. We're talking a couple months at most long-term. Like the three RX 570s, I've already put two of them in projects and sold them off. So to round that all up, first month, if you're looking to do this long-term, look to pay for yourself or pay for all the little investments you had that first month. So now let's get into my actual process or how I make money and how I look at things and what deals I'm looking for. So I'm gonna start from the beginning because I kind of built my process as I went. I didn't go into it with this mentality, but it might help you to go into your flipping with this mentality. What I do is I try and grab components for reasonable prices, either what they're selling for on average on the use price or drastically below that, um, depending on what component I'm looking at, putting it in a computer system, all shipped up, all together, works, Windows 10, all that wonderful stuff, and then selling it. And the reason I do that is pretty important. The RX 570s, I bought three of them, three of them, I held up two, I don't work well. I bought three of them for $100. That means they're roughly $30 a piece. They're actually 33 repeating, but that's just, it's not worth keeping track of that. So about $30 each, let's just stay there. If you go on eBay right now, as of, you know, October 20th, which is around the time I'm filming this video, averagely, you can look at getting 75 to 80. These are the 574 gigabyte editions. So 70 to $80 is a pretty reasonable price to look to sell these cards for. I could have just bought all three of these, put them up on eBay, sold them for 70 bucks each, and made a $40 profit on all of them. So you could look at it that way, just looking for little one-off deals. But what I do, I think is a better investment and a better use of my time. I bought the RX 570s with the intention of putting them in systems and selling them for a higher profit margin. I could earn 40 bucks off of each card, but if I put it in a computer, I could earn 100, 150, $200 off of each card. If you can get a decent price on your core components like your processor, your motherboard, or your GPU, then you can look at just getting okay deals for the rest of the computer, selling it, and making a good amount of profit. 
the first computer that I sold was a Dell Optiplex. Put the RX 570 in it, made sure it wasn't bottlenecked, everything was running fine. Put it up on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace as a budget, you know, Fortnite, you know, gaming machine. That's a lot of people are looking for that right now. I put $180 into it at the end of the day, even. That's like power supply, graphics card, the computer itself. I was 180 in, which is pretty decent for the performance I was getting out of it. I sold it for $320, which is a much better profit than $40. So instead of the $40 that I would have made off of selling one of these cards, I did a little bit more work and made $140 off of it. And that's just an easy, I've made an extra $100 off these cards or off a single card. And so if we do that for all three of them, then I'm making $140 for three cards which is like $420 if I'm doing my math right in my head, which sounds a lot better than making 120 bucks, at least in my opinion. Core thing to remember about this, the main thing that makes this work is getting your core components for either 60 or 50% off. And the best way to do this, besides just getting really lucky and just finding someone who's selling something for super cheap, is buying things in bulk and like relative bulk. I'm not talking a thousand units from a warehouse, maybe like three or four or five items at a time. If someone's like selling their whole system and they're parting it out or they're, you know, selling multiple graphics cards because they're like X miners or something of that sort, you can usually talk the price down if you're buying all of them. And that's how I got these uh, RX 570s for such a great deal. You know, no questions. You know, I don't have to see them working because he told me they were in the box. I'm not too worried about it. Of course, I could have been out a hundred bucks and that would have been out a hundred bucks. There's not much you can do about that. Drove down there, told the guy I'd buy it for 150, but he made me drive a little bit extra. So he's like, you can have it for a hundred. So deals like that is what you're looking for. Like buying multiple. I also I bought these cards from the same guy, believe it or not. So I spent $300 for these and they're all valued right now at about $200 on eBay. So again, I could put them on eBay, earn a hundred bucks off all of them, but I'm looking at putting them in systems right now and selling them for a much higher profit. And that's my current project that I'm working on. So we've talked about what your plan should be, what your end goal should be. Well, not should be, but what it can be. Um, with selling the whole bulk computer units all put together. Now, where can you buy them? How do you get okay deals? You know, let's dig into that a little bit deeper. Um, obviously, the obvious ones, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and Craigslist. If you live in like outside of the US, it's like Gumtree and a few other things of that nature. Those three are the pillars of what I've been using. I tried like offer up and things, but I don't think my area is large enough to support smaller used like selling apps and whatnot. What I've found is that Facebook Marketplace has a lot less educated sellers. It's usually like people just taking a crappy photo of what they're trying to sell, not putting a description, throwing up a price that they think it's reasonable for, some luck here and there, like finding someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, and you know, talking them down to a price in which I can invest and feel comfortable getting my money back out of it. Craigslist, on the other hand, is kind of a mixed bag. You have your people who have self-proclaimed that they're tech experts and they've put this computer together or they built it two years ago and it was $4,000 and now they want, you know, $2,200 and it's such a steal, it's 50% off. I hate that shit. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. I don't think it gets people to buy your computers or items, wherever you're selling. And it's just awful and annoying to get through and it's a waste of everybody's time. It's also just a crap zone for people who are like PC repair or, you know, I'll build a computer for free. I'll build a computer in your desk. I'll send you a part list, you know. I understand there's a place for that, but it's really annoying when there's like seven ads, you know, every day being renewed at the beginning of every week. I find it a tad obnoxious. To start off, look for people that have decent descriptions. You can take risks with people that don't have good descriptions. You might have to do some like Sherlock's home, Sherlock Holmes investigating, zooming into their picture, typing in little product numbers that you can see. Is that a seven? Is that an L? I have no freaking idea. You type it all in pop something out, some part in Japan that makes no sense, like a washing machine. You have to kind of do your research with some people. But if you find someone who really, really puts effort into their description and they have good like pictures and whatnot and they're really easy to communicate with, 
then you want to just like put all your effort into making that deal happen as soon as possible. Because even in my area, which is not a high traffic used market area, I live next to a college town and there's a city like 45 minutes away. I wouldn't describe either of them as like big markets for used parts. So anyway, with that said, people that put effort in get a ton of messages and they have a ton of people asking them this and asking them that and meeting here, meeting there. You want to be the first, you want to be the fastest, and you want to be the easiest to deal with. You don't have to be like super polite and send them some long business email. You can be like, hey man, saw your post, I want to buy it, here's what I'm offering, here's when I can get it. Be straight to the point, and usually if you do that, you can get a lot more replies than like, hey, I looked at your post and I was wondering if like, if this is in good condition, can you assure that it's working? Like, I find that annoying when I'm selling things, but I understand why people do it. But if you're looking to get good deals and not miss out on them, you have to be straight on it. You gotta be quick and fast and I can't emphasize that enough. If you think you found a deal, do your research on how much these items are worth. There's been a few times where I've kind of almost messed up. I've bought things I thought were a little bit more valuable than they actually were. I bought things that weren't compatible or I've bought things that like were a little iffy on the quality of them. And I did this because it wasn't like big ticket items. They were like power supplies and hard drives and things that were like 20, 30 bucks here and there. So like if they turned out to be dead, which a couple of them were, it's not the end of the world. It's kind of just comes with the territory. But if you're looking at spending $400 or like $300 on a bulk purchase of like graphics cards or a computer itself, what I usually do if I'm buying a computer, I find all the parts that I can that are in the listing. I look up the price, the reviews, you know, how often they sell. A lot of the time you can look on eBay and see, oh, this one sold for 120 and this one sold for 200. That's great. Like, you know, I can reasonably expect to get 140 out of it. But if they sell like months apart, then you're not going to have a lot of bids. You're not going to have a lot of activity. So you can just get gypped and you might just get like 100 bucks for it. And so you have to realize that the used market is not set in stone by any means and you have to do a lot of research to guarantee the parts that you're looking for are worth what you think they are. Spend maybe another hour or two after you think that you found a great deal, digging through the internet, checking their price, checking the performance you can get out of them. Let's go over selling. You know, you've got your great deal, you've put a computer together, you know, you're ready to get that profit because now you've like, you're 200 in the hole and you're like, damn, I really gotta get something sold because I, I was in that territory, I can assure you. Take very, very good photos. Take it of every single angle, the front, the back, the side. Take a like, artistically catching or like a marketing kind of picture for your first picture. It can be like a three-fourths quarter angle of the computer. I did mine with the graphics card next to it to show that it isn't just a Dell Optiplex because that was one of my main fears is that people are going to be, oh, it's just a office PC that some college kid is saying can game. But I wanted to like stress to people and ensure to people off the first image that it was something different and something that was actually worth $320. So anyway, I put it up. A bunch of people were like, hey man, I'll trade you my PS4 for it. Or if you want a dirt bike, I'll give you a dirt bike for it. And like, they might be great deals and it might work for you. But usually I just say, hey man, not looking for a deal, but you know, it's still available if you want to talk cash, you know, you can keep that door open, but don't jump at the first person that messages you. Everyone wants to lowball you. Everyone wants to talk you down and you can put that into your price. I was hoping at bare minimum to get $300 for this Dell Optiplex because I'd put 180 in, making 100 bucks off of it would have made me a happy camper. It was much more than selling a single uh, graphics card by itself and it was enough to make me happy. Selling it for 320 was just a cherry on top. It was an extra 20 bucks. Good for me, man. But I played it at 350. And the reason I put it at 350, I later dropped it down after about a week, um, is people want to haggle. They, they want that interaction. They expect it when you're selling things you use and dealing person to person and not through a store. So if you bump your price up a little bit, more than your bare minimum that you want to get, um, then you can let people talk you down. They feel like they get a deal. I feel like that's pretty common sense, but I thought I'd mention that because that was something I did and saw success with. Your description. Depending on what you're selling, I've sold parts and I've sold full systems. If you're selling parts, it's really useful to link the company's like spec website. So like you can go to their part number, part store, specification sheet, 
and they can look at exactly what it is and that way you don't have to go through and describe every single little thing about it. Also, don't just copy and paste a huge like description off of Amazon and throw it in your description. I don't like it. I feel like a lot of other buyers don't like it. If you wanna buy something new and see a new description, go to Amazon. You're buying something used. There should be something different than just the generic item description. Listing, you know, that it works, that you know, it's in, if it's in a box, if it's not in a box, that's really all you need for parts. Most people, if they have more questions, will send those to you. If you're selling a computer, what I recommend is having a little bit of like a flavor paragraph at the beginning, you know, what the computer is capable of, why it's built, you know, who it's aimed for. Like for the Dell Optiplex that I sold, it was, you know, budget friendly gaming PC, best bang for buck performance, you know, those things, because that's what a lot of people will be looking for in that uh, price bracket. So have like a little flavor text at the beginning, guarantee it works and you know, what you did do it like briefly. And then I broke down my description. It's a pretty lengthy description, but I feel like that's not bad. Like people always want more information, not less. If they're digging through the description, then they obviously wanna know more, right? After that, I broke down the exact specifications, what's in it, including like the motherboard, any little adapters I had to put in. Below that, I included a pretty lengthy benchmarking, you know, fire strike, FPS uh, statistic thing for all of the most popular games right now, including FPS numbers that you can tell are like actually researched and done well because there's a lot of FPS numbers that I've seen on used uh, computer postings like can easily do ultra 1080p gaming at 120 FPS plus plus you know like obviously that guy did not sit down and play every single game he had at 1080p ultra and guarantee they can do you know 120 plus he didn't want to go through the time he can't really assure you that that's true he just threw it in there he's like some kid will believe it and call it a day if you go through and meticulously record you know the fps you can do benchmarking with msi afterburner that's a whole other video on how to do benchmarking how to present it well um but if you do that then I feel like a lot of people who like kind of know what they're talking about with computers can look at these numbers and be like, oh, I know what that is. I know that that's good. And wow, that's, you know, great for this, like, you know, price range. That helps a ton. I've had multiple people mention to me that they like enjoyed that part of the description or they like felt more comfortable with that. Um, so that's how I did my descriptions for both the computers and for the parts. You know, you can change it, adjust it how you will. That's just how I've seen my success in selling my components. And I can follow that up with saying nothing has lasted more than 10 days. That's a guarantee that I can say right now. Everything that I was looking to sell sold within 10 days. And that's awesome. So before I wind up this video, because I don't want it to be super long. I don't want it to be super rambly. It's supposed to be an intro to how you can get into computer flipping. So I don't want to bombard you with a bunch of very specific stuff. If you have questions, I'm totally willing to give you my advice on them in the comments section. You know, I'm not saying that I'm always right. I can just give you advice on my experience. And if my experience is something that you're gunning for, you know, making money off of flipping computers for your first month, uh, then I can definitely help you there. I just want to mention one more thing. Keeping very meticulous records of what you're buying and what you're selling can help you tremendously. And I'm talking about, you know, what you bought, the part number, how much you bought it for, when you bought it, when you're selling it, when you sold it, you know, how much you sold it for, who you sold it to. This helps way more than I can stress. Also, it stresses you out a little bit to have all of these numbers going down. And, oh, I've put in this much money and this much money and oh, I'm never gonna make that back. There's two parts to this. One, it's just a really nice and easy tool. You can show people that you're being successful. You can show yourself you're being successful. Uh, if you ever have any like needs to like tax it or like there's some sort of like law thing involved, then you have great records for it and it's never hurt to have great records. The second part of this is if you're selling on eBay or if you're selling on any online site that you can't guarantee like a person to person transaction, then you should have the part number and serial number recorded for these parts because a very common scam that people do on eBay, they'll have like a broken MSI armor RX 570. They'll buy mine, they'll receive it, say it's broken, send back their broken one, keep the one that I sent them that works and be like, it must have gotten like damaged and shipping. It doesn't work. You know, send it back, get the refund. And now you're stuck with a different one that's broken because you didn't record the serial number. But if you have the serial number, you can get that card. You can be like, 
nope that don't match up and you can you know put that up with ebay there's more ways of dealing with that um so that's really my last little tip again there's so much more i can go into but i don't want to bore you if you have questions put them below if you got the video a like a dislike depending on you know where you land on that spectrum i'd appreciate that yeah i did a month of flipping and this is where i ended up so good luck